we saw a wave of climate tech investing years ago in Silicon Valley, and it didn't necessarily pay off. We saw a lot of failure. Why do you think this round will be different? Um, Emily, great to be here today. Um, firstly, look, I think we're producing not only technology products, which we can use to farm, we're producing food. And really, there's nothing much more fundamental than figuring out how to provide food security. And, and that's a big part of what I think we see driving this wave of investment in agritech. Tell us more about what Plenty is, is trying to achieve and what gaps it fills. So we, we look at produce and fruits as markets that are highly impacted by seasonality, by weather. As we saw in 2019, we're only really one bad fire event away from having major disruptions to food supply, particularly for fresh fruit and vegetables. And so we see Plenty as really providing a technology solution that can take the climate out of the equation when it comes to providing surety of supply to retailers, to growers, and ultimately to the consumer. And over the last decade, we've seen very significant investment go into this sector around the enabling technologies, whether it's improvements in lighting, climate control, management of and growth of food indoors, fresh plants indoors, all of the things that Plenty has really been doing over this last decade to get to the point where we're at now, where we're ready to actually really start scaling and providing our technology and providing, frankly, fresh available food year round to consumers. You were appointed CEO of Plenty just today. Congratulations. What do you bring Thank to you. the business and what will change? So I've been an investor actually in Plenty since its start. Um, so I've been both an operator and an investor in Agrotech for more than 15 years. Um, and as, uh, as we started to think about how do we scale Plenty pretty from its R&D roots into building really capacity at scale, farms at scale, you know, we're opening in Compton, the world's largest indoor vertical farm by output later this year. Um, I guess I bring commercial experience as well as sort of investment innovation experience to help the company to its next stage of growth. Now, the former CEO was, of course, the founder, sort of, uh, you know, really passionate about farming. Why did the board feel the need to appoint someone new? Um, really, the stage we're going into now is really commercial scaling. It's a different skill set. Um, Matt, by the way, Barnard remains chairman. So he's taken the step up into the board as executive chairman in the company. And he's also going to be continuing his work, focusing on particularly our, our engagement with states, with the federal government and the work that we're doing here around really transforming farming. So um, as we think also about the scale of the company, you know, we, um, we've announced our first commercial farm in, um, in, in Compton and Los Angeles. And we, we have uh, further announcements coming this year as we start to hit go um, on scaling our technology out into to many more locations and actually also across more crops. Uh, as you know, we, we started with leafy greens but we, we plan to bring additional crops, including strawberries, including tomatoes and more to the space. Really, it's, it's going to be a very, um, very exciting time for Plenty as we look to scale up. You're building the world's highest output vertical indoor farm in Compton, California. How's that going? Uh, it's going really well. Um, you know, a lot of the work that we did and some of the shots you had in the background there show our farm in San Francisco, which was our pilot for building the Compton facility. Um, it's in a fantastic location. You know, LA is one of the great food cities in America. It's, uh, it puts us in touch of a lot of consumers as we start to basically put our product out there on shelves in, in hundreds to thousands, ultimately, of stores. Um, and we're, we're on track to open later this year, so couldn't be more excited. SoftBank's Vision Fund has been one of your biggest backers. How involved is SoftBank these days, and do you have plans to raise more money? Um, they continue to be a great supporter of the company, actually. Um, they've been, you know, frankly, patient and smart capital in helping us get to this point. Um, yes, as you sort of said at the start of your segment, this is a capital-intensive business. So while it's, it's technology, it's also food production. Um, so we're building and plan to build more assets that will require more capital. And that's certainly part of the game plan for us as we look to grow.